In honor of the Islamic holy month of Ramadan, let's all take a few minutes to understand the role and impact of fasting in Islam. The Arabic word for fasting is saum. It's derived from a Syriac term meaning to abstain. However, in its religious context, saum refers specifically to Islamic fasting as prescribed in the Quran and the Hadith. Salm is especially associated with Ramadan, the ninth month of the Islamic lunar calendar. Muslims who are not exempt for some reason are required to abstain from food, beverages, and sexual intercourse from dawn to sunset for the entire month. Fasting during Ramadan is one of the five pillars of Islam. If all of this sounds innocent, it's not. Ramadan is killing Muslims, not only spiritually, but also physically. CNN reports, Though the month-long season is associated with deprivation, overeating is common practice once the sun goes down. In many hospitals in the Gulf states of the Middle East, the holiday means a sharp rise in inpatients. Among the causes of this rise in inpatients are heat stress due to dehydration, an increase in traffic accidents, and non-compliance with medications due to disturbed eating and sleeping habits. Crime rates also increase in many areas during Ramadan. Amon News declares, in addition to fights, negative phenomena increase during the month of Ramadan, including traffic accidents, home robberies, purse snatching in public, and begging, according to security sources. The Social Defense Department at the Ministry of Social Development arrested 26 beggars during the first week of Ramadan. There has also been an increase in residential fires, particularly in the few hours before iftar, fast-breaking time, caused by misuse of cooking gas cylinders and increased electricity usage. But the main source of Ramadan-related health problems is gluttony. The CNN report continues. In recent years, the region has witnessed an increasing struggle with obesity and diabetes. Last month, a United Nations study rated many Gulf Cooperation Council countries as among the world's fattest. Why the increase in obesity? Paradoxically, Muslims tend to eat far more when they're fasting than when they're not fasting. You see, Ramadan isn't simply not eating. It's gorging yourself before sunrise, taking a break while the sun's out, and gorging yourself again at sundown, a diet recommended by no doctor ever. Let's look at some numbers from a Muslim country. According to the National Consumer Institute of Tunisia, Muslim consumption of basic food products doubles during Ramadan. Milk consumption goes from less than a liter per person in other months to around two liters per person during Ramadan. Yogurt consumption more than doubles, skyrocketing from 5.4 pots per person to 12.9 pots per person. Egg consumption goes from just under 13 per person to 26 per person. Consumption of rolls goes from 0.6 kilograms per person to 1.4 kilograms per person. Spending and waste also increase dramatically during Ramadan. We read in Arab News, The problem of food wastage in Ramadan has again surfaced, with Mecca municipality having to gather 5,000 tons in the first three days of Ramadan. According to one report, Saudis spend 20 billion rials on Ramadan shopping compared to 6 billion rials they spend in other months. Osama al-Zaytouni of the municipality told Arab News on Thursday that this was in addition to the collection of 28,000 sheep carcasses in two days. He said the municipality had installed 45 waste compressors in central Mecca, close to the Grand Mosque, and deployed 8,000 cleaners for the month. At the beginning of Ramadan, the Ministry of Commerce and Industry expressed concern that 45% of the waste in Ramadan consists of food. It also revealed that 80% of the food prepared is unhealthy. So why do Muslims eat more and spend more and waste more when they're fasting than when they're not fasting? Why put a mask of piety on gluttony and excess? The answer, I think, lies at the very heart of Islam. Islam doesn't teach people to control their desires. Islam encourages people, the men at least, to carry their desires to a perverse extreme, but only allows them to satisfy these desires within an Islamic framework, thus trapping people with their own desires and using them in the service of the religion. For instance, if a non-Muslim man goes clubbing regularly and has sex with a hundred different women, Islam will condemn him as a fornicator. But if this same man converts to Islam and joins the jihad movement, he can marry four women and take home sex slaves after every battle and be perfectly righteous before Allah even if he has sex with a hundred different women.
Notice, same desire in both cases, sex with lots of women, but one is acceptable and the other is unacceptable, based on whether it's advantageous to Islam. Likewise, if a psychopath goes on a killing spree, brutally murdering men, women, and children, he's surely going to hell, according to Islam. Unless, of course, he's killing men, women, and children in a terrorist attack for the sake of Allah, in which case his violent massacre will earn him a one-way ticket to paradise. The psychopath wants to kill either way, but Islam provides the framework for pleasing Allah while satisfying the desire. According to Muslim sources, the tribes of Mecca were violent, lascivious, and gluttonous. Muhammad didn't change their behavior when he forced them to convert to Islam. He made their desires even more extreme and presented them with only one way to satisfy them. And when you can take the lowest, most animalistic part of people and convince them that it's the best part of them and that they're serving God by killing and raping and shoveling food into their mouths, you've just made yourself an army. Hence the rapid spread of Islam. Should we be surprised that Ramadan is a month-long series of gluttonous feasts that Muslims call fasting and view as one of their highest religious duties? Not at all. When Muhammad's your prophet, you don't have someone who can give sight to the blind or raise the dead. You only get one miracle. Behavior that's normally regarded as selfish or harmful is miraculously transformed into the will of God.